Hello and welcome to Vovork. I'm Brian Watrous and this is part 23 of a 10 part video series in which we're exploring how to automate using vRealize Orchestrator. Now this is one of several videos explaining how to do looping within your Orchestrator workflows. If you haven't seen the previous ones, you might want to go back a few videos and take a look at those. But in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a schema element that allows you to do looping. It's a schema element called for each. Now, in order to follow along with me in the lab environment that I'm just about to go to, you're going to want to make certain that you take a look in the YouTube description down below for information about how to download the package that I'm working with in the lab environment we're about to look at. So if you haven't already gotten that, take a look in the YouTube description down below. And you might also want to take a look at video number 14, uh, which will explain information about what this package is. But assuming you've got the package installed, let's get started. As you can see here, I'm looking at a workflow. Uh, the workflow obviously begins with the start schema element, and then it goes to this get all VMs element. We talked about that previously, first back in video number 21, but the basic thing that this action is doing is it's going out to your vCenter server and it's getting a list, specifically an array, of all the virtual machines in our entire environment. And what we're going to do in this workflow with that array of VMs is feed them into this next schema element. This is a for each schema element. You can tell it's a for each because of the icon. What a for each element does is it calls a workflow, but unlike the workflow caller schema element that we've seen before, the for each schema element calls the workflow you specify multiple times. So we're in effect in this workflow going to get a list of all the VMs and then for each of those VMs we're going to call a particular workflow. Let's find out which workflow. Now to do that, if you have a for each in your, your workflow, you can find out what workflow it's calling either by looking at the name uh, beneath the icon itself, but sometimes that name gets truncated. In this case, it happens to have not been truncated, but what if the workflow we're calling had a long name? Well, you can always figure out the name of the workflow that this for each is calling by editing the for each schema element. If you just look down here below on the info tab uh, where it says inner workflow, it gives you the exact path name to the workflow that we're calling. So in the workflow we're currently editing, we're doing a for each schema element to call a workflow called print info repeatedly. And if I quit out of this current workflow, let me discard any changes I may have made. Um, now that I'm out of that workflow, here's the other workflow that we're calling. It's a simple little workflow called print info. All this workflow does is it take all this workflow does is take one VM at a time and pass that VM into an action that gets us the amount of memory in that virtual machine, and then the, this workflow logs that information. So nothing particularly exciting going on in this particular workflow. The action that's taking place, perhaps I shouldn't use the word the action, but the interesting stuff in this video is taking place in this workflow. This workflow is using the for each schema element to call the other workflow repeatedly. Make sense so far? Well, let's continue taking a look at this workflow. And so let me edit the schema element. And one of the things that you can see in here is that uh, we have the usual sorts of tabs that we usually see, such as the in tab. Well, that's interesting. There's something new here. It says something about an array to be traversed. And furthermore, if we go poking around other places like the visual binding section, we might see things that we don't ordinarily see. For instance, the other workflow that we're calling, the one called print info, it takes one input parameter. And that input parameter is simply a virtual machine. But notice that when we wrap that other workflow in the for each, Orchestrator automatically turned the input parameter into an array of virtual machines. Let me select this variable. So this is the, the input parameter in the other workflow. And as we can see explicitly here, this is an array of VC clone virtual machines. It's an array of virtual machines. So that's one thing that's different when you use the for each. The workflow that you call gets um, well, the workflow it's, that gets called doesn't get modified, but the way we call it gets modified so that each time we go into the workflow, we'll feed into the other workflow a, uh, for instance, a different uh, virtual machine that we want to 
print the information about. Uh, now, that leads us to a core concept with this whole for each schema element, which we saw real briefly there a moment ago, but I buzzed right past it. When you use a for each schema element to call another workflow repeatedly, you have to specify for us which one or more than one. If you want to know about more than one, uh, take a look at the next video. But for right now, we're going to keep this simple. You need to tell Orchestrator which one input parameter of the other workflow, which one of its input parameters you want to treat as an iterator. That word iterator is just a fancy word that means each time for each calls the other workflow, it's going to pass in, in this example, it's going to pass in a different virtual machine. So whereas the workflow we're calling ordinarily expects us to pass in a single virtual machine, the for each element is going to pass in one VM at a time by traversing over an array of virtual machines, which you'll recall is exactly what we got with this get all VMs action. So instead of calling the print info workflow just once, we're going to use the for each schema element. We're going to specify that the array of VMs that we just looked up will act as the iterator variable for the for each. And again, if we look in here again real closely here, that's what this section is telling us here. The array that the for each is going to traverse is the array of VMs that we generated in this action here. So if you want to, I can run this. It's not going to be terribly exciting because I don't have that many virtual machines, but let's go ahead and run this workflow. And as you can see, as it runs through the workflow, it announces the name of a virtual machine, tells us how much memory is in that virtual machine. Looks like it's announcing the next virtual machine. And for some reason, my uh, orchestrator client's acting a little weird here. Let me just tick a little, a little bit. There we go. So now I can see the whole lab, excuse me, the whole log. So I can see that the machine called VC has 10 gigabytes of memory and the machine called VRO has six gigabytes of memory. So this one workflow at first glance, just looks like a, a linear workflow, but it actually has a loop going on in here. This one workflow is printing out information about all the virtual machines in my environment, all two of them. All right, so now that you see the, the how, how this works, let's look at the mechanics of how you set it up. So to do that, let me revert back and make certain I haven't made any changes here. I'm gonna save this guy here using a different name because I don't wanna accidentally mess it up. So we'll save this workflow. And we're going to recreate it from scratch. So let's recreate it from scratch. So we'll right click and choose. A sec here, my right click's not working. There we go. We'll right click, we'll choose new workflow, and we're going to call this one for each looping. Just like the example we saw before. And we should type a description. I always type descriptions, but to save time in this video, I'm going to skip that. And I'm going to jump straight to the schema. Now you'll recall in the workflow that we just saw illustrated, the first thing it did was call an action. Specifically, it called the action called get all VMs. So we'll call get all VMs. And we'll hook up this, this action because it's got some potentially some input parameters and output parameters. Well, it turns out it has no input parameters. This particular action doesn't need any input parameters. It's just going to simply go to your vCenter server and say, vCenter server, give me all your virtual machines. But it's going to return that list of virtual machines as an array of, let's take a look exactly what this is. It's an array of VC colon virtual machines. So we get that through this variable called action result, but I don't want to save that variable as action result. That's a horrible name. Instead, I'm going to create an attribute, and instead of using the default name of action result, I'm going to call this new array of VMs, VMs. And again, I should type a description, but to speed up this video, I'm going to skip that part. And uh, since I'm hooking up to his variable, I have to go with his type, I have to go with his quantity. It's an attribute that I'm setting up, so I could set up the value, but I'm not going to bother setting up the value because the schema element the action that we're calling is going to set the value. So at this point, we now have a array of virtual machines called VMS. Now what we're going to do is to tell this workflow to call the other workflow. 
Now in previous videos, we've called other workflows by using the schema element called workflow element. But that only works if you want to call the other workflow once. We want to call the other workflow multiple times, so we're going to use the for each schema element. We'll drag a for each into our workflow. We'll tell it the name of the workflow that we want to call. So let me select it once and make certain, yep, that's the one I want. Double click the workflow. And as you can see here, the setup wizard has appeared at the top of the screen. Let's go into the setup wizard. And in the setup wizard, what we're seeing here is the input parameters to the uh, workflow we're trying to call, the workflow called print info. Now that workflow has a single input parameter called uh, VM. And that VM variable is, strictly speaking, a VC colon virtual machine. In other words, the workflow that we're trying to call is expecting a single virtual machine. But when you work with the for each schema element, you need to pass in an array of things so that each time the for each calls other workflow, it can take another item off of that array. So with the setup wizard, you can easily turn one of the input parameters of the workflow you're calling. In this case, there's only one input parameter, but for whatever input parameter you want to be the iterator, you just simply click this here to turn it black. So notice it's gray now, you want to turn it black. Uh, black here means that this variable called VM is going to be the iterator variable. And since it's going to be multiple VMs, I'm going to change this name slightly here to VMs. And I'll go ahead and hit promote. Now that I've done that, if we were to go back and look at the, let's look at visual binding first. Notice that we're connecting to the other workflows, other workflows variable called VM. Again, that's ordinarily a single VC colon virtual machine. But in this case, because it's been wrapped in a for each schema element, it's not just a single VC colon virtual machine, it's an array of VC colon virtual machines. So his variable is now being treated as an array. Each time we go through the loop, we pass in a different VM from our array called VMs. So in our workflow, we have a variable called VMs. That's our array. Each time the for each calls the other workflow, it's going to pass in one of these virtual machines into the VM variable in the for each um, in the for each construct. It's going to pass that information into the other workflow. Additionally, if we go over to the in tab, we can see, as I showed you before, a specification of which of the input parameters for the workflow we're calling is going to be used as the iterator. If you want to, you can click on this link here and see exactly which variables are going to be iterators. Again, as we specified a few moments ago, we want the, the VM variable to be the iterator. So that's the mechanics of how you set up a for each schema element. Uh, you may have noticed that as, as I went through these steps, I specifically used the setup wizard to do so because that setup wizard had that little circle arrow button that you could click on, turn the button black, and that turns the variable into an iterator. In my experience, that's the, the most foolproof way of, using, of setting up a for each uh, schema element. In theory, you should be able to set up the iterator Without using the setup wizard, you should be able to set up the iterator by simply editing the for each schema element, going to the end tab and clicking on this link here initially to set up which variable you want to be the iterator. But in my experience over multiple releases in Orchestrator, um, that functionality of setting up the iterator initially in the end tab doesn't seem to always work. Uh, once I have set up the iterator using another technique such as the setup wizard, then I've I've always found I can go back into the end tab to change the iterator, but initially setting up the iterator doesn't seem to work, um, at least in my experience, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but it doesn't seem to work consistently with the, uh, the end tab. And the visual binding tab, the tab that you know I love, doesn't provide any way of setting up the iterator variable at all. I can see evidence that this, iter this variable has been set up as the iterator, but there's no way in the visual binding tab to set up or change the iterator variable, at least again, not that I know of. So 
I'm not trying to nitpick uh, the in-dab or, or the visual binding tab. I just want to make certain that you know um, that, at least for me, in my experience across a multitude of orchestrator releases, I've always found that the surefire way to set up a 4-H style workflow is to use the setup wizard. Uh, if you have a different experience uh, or you have different techniques that you use to set up the 4-H, I would love to hear from you. Uh, just drop a comment down in the the YouTube comments, excuse me, the, yeah, the YouTube comments down below and share with me and everyone else how you set up for each loops. All right, so that wraps up this video. This was video number 23. Video number 24 is related, it's similar. It's also gonna teach you how to use the for each loop schema element. But whereas in this video, we used a single iterator, in the next video, I'll show you how to set up multiple iterators. So see you over in video number 24.